All right, welcome back to Mr. P-Ups with Calculus. This is Unit 4, Day 1. And we're going to be exploring a lot of the basic relationships between a position, velocity, and acceleration, which is the basics of a lot of the questions you're going to be dealing with this year. And we're also going to be exploring the distance difference between displacement and total distance, which is also very important as well. All right, uh, we have ourselves a question. This is taken from 2012. This is actually an AP board. They release the test questions at the end of each test. So you get to see all the free response questions and just not the multiple choice. And this is an old free response question. It says the temperature of a water in a tub at time t is modeled by strictly increasing. So it's only increasing on this entire timeline. Even though it's discrete, that tells us that every number in between has to be getting larger. Twice differentiable functions, so no corners, no cusps, no vertical um, tangent lines. Uh, w, which happens to be a uh, differential function W, where WT is measured in degrees Fahrenheit and T is measured in minutes. At time equals zero, the temperature of the water is 55 degrees Fahrenheit. The water is heated for 30 minutes, beginning at time T equals zero. At selected times in T for the first 20 minutes are given on the table above. All right, so it says use the table. Uh, in the data, in the use the data in the table to d estimate w prime of 12. This is something we have done before, so we're trying to find right here. We just use our slope formula, so that's w of uh, 15 minus w of 9 over 15 minus 9, and then that's going to give us our answer. And then it says use the context of the situation. I know I mentioned this in previous questions, but anytime I know it, it is strictly increasing, but had it been decreasing, you don't ever want to use um you don't ever want to use negative numbers in your answer. You always want to you want to just say it's decreasing. It's decreasing by 1.016. You don't want to say negative 1.016. So very important thing that you want to keep track of when you're doing these FRQs. But this is exactly what they expect, pretty much. Um, I pretty much word it the same, but it doesn't have to be worded exactly the same. So we're looking for the time. So after 12 minutes have passed, that means right here at this time, the temperature of water is increasing by that amount. Remember, always use three significant digits. That means three digits after the decimal. Uh, and you have to always say what its meaning is in the context of the question. This happens to be degrees Fahrenheit per minute. Now I use the slash instead of per, but that's all the same thing. All right, so as we get into what is the dis difference between vola I'm sorry, position of a function happens to just be the position, which you would say S of T. Displacement is how much it's changed since the beginning. So displacement, uh, if you start at A and then you end at B, so let me pull out my, di let me just make a little diagram to make this a little, make a little bit more sense. Let's say you start here at position A, Okay, it's not letting me write. There we go, pen. Let's say you start at position A, and here's position B, and you go this way, then 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 this way. It doesn't matter. Displacement just means you're doing basically B minus A. You're saying, what is the position where you ended at? Minus what is the position that you started at? So the answer you would get for displacement is just this distance right here. It does not matter what how much distance you travel, that would be total distance. So in the next question it says total distance, then you would be figuring out, well, how far was this? How far was this? How far was this? How far was this? And you would add those all up. Now, sometimes, because we're going to be dealing with um, graphs that have both, uh, you know, one axis or it could be two axes, and then what you're going to need to do is when you have a axis that just goes like this, like the x-axis, then you would say, well, if I go total distance and I start here and I go this way and I go this way and I go this way and I go this way, displacement's just going to be where you ended minus where you started. But total distance means you're going to have to add those all up. And anytime you go to the right, that's going to be a positive. And anytime you go left, that's going to be a negative. Now, since you're adding positives to negatives, you're going to have to do the absolute value of all the negatives, which is what I've done here. So let's say we've moved, and uh, I think I, here we go. So I think it should say there, four meters to the right, then two meters up, then four meters left, then two meters down. Well, that's a total distance of four plus two plus the absolute value of negative four plus the absolute value of negative two. And then that's going to give you a total distance of 12. Now, if you did that exact same movement and you were asked, what is the displacement? Well, you ended in the exact same place that you started. So therefore, you have done a total displacement of zero. 
All right, so that hopefully uh, makes that a little bit easier to understand. Now, another thing that I'm just going to reveal all of this, another very, very important distinction you need to know is, um, oh, well, sorry, I was thinking something else. So we have different ways. So this happens to be the derivative of position. So position is S of T. So the derivative of position is velocity. Velocity means how much an object has changed over time. So in this case, you're basically just using the slope formula. So the slope formula of the originals, that's average velocity. Average velocity and the derivative are not the same thing. I think I mentioned that in a prior video. That's instantaneous rate of change, whereas average velocity is going to be, you know, just average rate of change. Not exactly the, the same thing. And you have to be very careful with that on questions. Speed is sort of like our displacement. Speed is always going to be the absolute value of velocity. Because if that's your average rate of change, you would have to do absolute value of that to find displacement for the very reason we just talked about on the last page. Now, on the AP exam, you will have to write this. You will have to say, if you're trying to find the acceleration of an object, you'll have to say the position, second derivative, is the same thing as the velocity's first derivative, which is the same thing as the acceleration. So if we break that down a little bit more, so if we have position, the rate of change, this is position is just a location. Now, if we're changing, we're going from A to B, that's your rate of change. That's your change of position. So that's your rate of change of position, which is your average velocity. So for how fast you are going from here to here. Now, how fast your speed, which is not the same thing as your velocity. Velocity is not the same thing as speed. Speed has, speed could be any direction. You could be going forwards, backwards, left, right. It does not matter because there's no such thing as a negative speed. If you put your car in reverse, you're still going a positive speed. Whereas velocity, velocity takes an account of, you know, which direction you're going. So if you're going to the right, you're going to be going positive velocity. If you're going to go left, you're going a negative velocity. Acceleration is just the rate of change of that rate of change, which is why it's the second derivative. It's how much your velocity is changing. So if velocity is how much your position is changing, acceleration is how much your velocity is changing. And if your acceleration is positive, that means your velocity is getting larger. Does not necessarily mean you're getting faster. And we'll get to that here in just a second. Acceleration is a second derivative. Okay, just mentioned that particle moving right. I think I've already covered that as well. All right. Um, I guess I might as well mention it here. I thought it was here on my notes. So what one distinction we do need to make before we go on is the fact that if you're going to the right, that means that your velocity would have to be greater than zero. If you're going to the left, then your velocity would have to be less than zero. Now, remember, not the same thing as speed. Speed is always going to be positive. But here's the thing. If your acceleration is also positive, then what that means is that you're just going to be going to the right faster because your velocity is going even more to the right. Whereas if you are going, if you have a positive velocity and your acceleration is negative, that means you're going to the right, but you're going to the right less fast. That means that your velocity is basically slowing down. So anytime your signs are different, that means you're slowing down. If your signs are the same, your velocity is positive and your acceleration is positive, that means you're going to the right even faster. Now, I know I mentioned this a second ago. I want to make this clear. So as, um, so as I was saying before, if your velocity is negative, that means you're going to the left. If your acceleration is also negative, that really just means you're going to the left faster. So yes, acceleration can be negative can mean you're actually speeding up because you're just going left even more of a negative. So if your velocity is like negative five meters per second and your acceleration is negative two meters per second, well, that just means after the first second, you're now going seven meters per second to the left. And after another second, you're going nine meters per second to the left. So your speed is actually getting faster. You're just going more and more to the left. So if signs are the same, you're actually speeding up. All right, when is the particle moving right? You know the particle is moving right if the velocity is positive. So what's important when you look at this is you need to understand, well, what am I exactly looking at? What 
function am I looking at? This happens to be t, the amount of seconds. This has to be y, the amount of inches. This is not a rate. This is just a regular graph. This happens to be time versus distance. So we know that the velocity is moving to the right anytime the velocity is positive. So you know it's positive if it's you know a positive inches over a positive amount of seconds, which is all it's going to be. So basically during this entire time right here from 0 to 3, it's always going to be moving to the right. I scratch that. I even just said why that's not true. I just said, so it's when your velocity is. And this is a position graph, not a velocity graph. It's very easy to get confused. Let me make that clear. So it's velocity that determines that you're moving right. Anytime the velocity, if your velocity is greater than zero, then you're moving to the right. And your velocity is moving to the right when, you're, when your position is increasing. So your average rate of change has to be going up. So that's only from four to six. When is the particle moving left? It's moving left during this time when the slope is going down. So remember, this is position. This is your position away. So if you are six, if you're six inches away, and then you go negative six inches away, then obviously you must have been moving to the left. Because if you look at it, so if you are at six inches, and the only way to get from here to here is to go to the left. This part right here was from 4 to 6. So let's say this is 4. The only way to get from 4 to 6 is to go to the right because the numbers are getting, I'm sorry, to get from negative 6 to 0. My fault. I don't know why I was doing that. To get from negative 6 back to 0, you would have to go to the right. I looked at the wrong numbers. All right, negative 6 is <laughs> the amount of inches here at 4. And zero inches away, which means you basically just where you back where you started. Although in this case you didn't start at where you were starting at. What is the particle? Why is the particle standing still? You know the particle standing still if the velocity is zero, which means the rate of change has to be zero. So that is only during this time. So from zero to two seconds. Now at two seconds, remember it's not differentiable. That's why this is a parenthesis here. It's not differentiable because it's a corner. When does the particle change direction? It changes direction. Well. Changes direction right here, that it goes from going down to going up. Changes right here, go from up to down, so that's an answer. And this isn't a change of direction because it wasn't going left or right at all. So it looks like it's just these two. Just at time, uh, four seconds and six seconds, yes. All right, now we have a velocity. This is the big difference here. This is velocity over time. So we're looking at a velocity graph. It says, when is the particle moving to the right? It's moving to the right anytime the velocity is positive. So since this y-axis represents the velocity, that just means it's any time that the velocity is positive. So anytime the entire graph is above the x-axis. And it's moving left anytime it's below the x-axis. When is the particle standing still? Well, that's when it's at zero. That would be these two points. When does the particle change direction? Well, that's at these two points as well. Just because it's standing still does not necessarily mean it's also changing direction. And I'll explain why. Maybe it went from positive velocity, hit zero to standing still instantaneously, or it didn't have to be instantaneously, it could have been for a while, and then went back to going right. That would not be a change of direction. So those are not really the same question. Just because it's standing still does not necessarily mean it had to change direction afterwards. It might have just bounced back and gone by, back up to being a positive velocity. So it just depends. All right, last one. Uh, the speed is blank when V of T and A of T have... Okay, so I mentioned this earlier. So speed is increasing. It's increasing when the velocity and acceleration have the same sign. So either they're both positive or both negative. If velocity is positive, it's moving to the right. If the acceleration is also positive, it's moving to the right even more. If velocity is negative, it's moving left. And if the acceleration is negative, it's moving left even more. The speed is decreasing when they have different signs. And like the ball is thrown up into the air, so when you throw it up into the air, its velocity might be positive. It's going up. It's positive. But then its acceleration due to the gravitational, gravitational pull, it's getting up less fast. So they have different signs. So the acceleration would have to be negative. It's going up less fast. All right, thanks again for watching. It looks like I almost ran out of time, and I will see you on the next video.